Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... And that's what you are, my friends, by believing in Christ. You are His dear children, heirs of all things that belong to Christ. You are beloved by God. You are His dear children, just like Jesus gathering the little children to Himself. God gathers in Jesus. He gathers all of you to Himself that you might be absolutely certain that this word is true. Jesus loves you. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Merry Christmas. I'm Matthew Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and associate pastor at Village Lutheran Church, Ledoux. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, 
renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament for the day of our Lord's birth is from Isaiah chapter 52. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Be seated, O Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down at the first into Egypt to sojourn there and the Assyrian oppressed them for nothing. Now therefore, what have I here, declares the Lord, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing. Their rulers wail, declares the Lord, and continually all the day my name is despised. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore in that day they shall know that it is I who speak. Here I am. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The epistle for today is from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. The Holy Gospel for today is from John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Merry Christmas, everybody. Words mean something very significant, don't they? Now, when I was a kid growing up in Sioux City, both sides of the family from rural areas, baptized at Bethel Lutheran Church in Lawton, Iowa, and then grew up and was confirmed at Redeemer Lutheran, also traveling around North Dakota, South Dakota, fishing in Minnesota, hunting in South Dakota, Nebraska, over in South Sioux, and many places where you are watching this from today. Words meant things, and in those days when I was a kid, a lot of times in families, things went unspoken. How wonderful it was even when I was waiting at home to be disciplined, my mother said, wait till your dad gets home. Finally, to have my dad come home and speak the de definitive words of necessary punishment and uh, forgiveness so we could move on and the air would be cleared. Jesus is called the Word by John, and not for an insignificant reason. You see, if you want to know who God is, if you want to know what God thinks of you, if you want to know what God is on about, you need to look to one place, the Word of God, actually Jesus. John's Gospel for this Christmas Gospel tells us who this Word is. In the beginning was the Word. When the beginning began, the Word, the second person of the Trinity, was already present. 
He was not a creature or creation like all other creatures and creation. The Word was with God. So now you have God and the Word. There are two persons. And the Word was God. What? One God. Two persons here. This one was in the beginning with God. And everything came into existence through him. How about that? If you want to know if Jesus is truly God, you look for divine names and divine actions. Here he's called both God and the text says that he does divine deeds. He creates. Everything came into existence through him. And apart from him, not one thing came into existence. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Darkness is sin. Darkness is death. Darkness is devil. But there is one in whom there is light, and it's Jesus and the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. This was God's remedy for the darkness of sin, this Jesus, the light. And there came a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, this is not the John who wrote this gospel account. By the way, Jesus told this John and others, that they would write down the deeds and words of Jesus. These things would be brought to their memory by the Holy Spirit. And at the end of John's Gospel, there's even the promise that these things were written so that those who hadn't seen them face to face might believe on Jesus' name. This John came for a witness, to bear witness to the light. And you know what a witness is? It's a legal term for a person who has actually seen something and in court testifies to it. So if you've seen an accident, you may have to go to court and say, well, this is what happened. That guy ran the red light. And you're bearing a legal testimony. John the, uh, John the baptizer was such a legal testimony. He, John the baptizer, came first preaching of Jesus so that all might believe through him. What did John preach? We see that in John 1.29. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. My dear friends, you can be absolutely certain that Jesus the Christ, born the babe at Bethlehem, came to be a lamb to be sacrificed for the sins of the world. Are you part of the world? Yes. Therefore, your sins have been paid for. There is therefore no condemnation for you. Christ took upon himself your sins. This one was the true light who lightens all men, and he was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created by him, but the world did not know him. Such is the great tragedy of Christ. He comes, and he is rejected by men. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. As many as receive him, he gave to them authority to become the children of God. And that's what you are, my friends, by believing in Christ. You are his dear children, heirs of all things that belong to Christ. You are beloved by God. You are his dear children, just like Jesus gathering the little children to himself. God gathers in Jesus. He gathers all of you to himself that you might be absolutely certain that this word is true. Jesus loves you. And these are children who became children not through blood, that is, through any kind of racial descendants, 
God loves all people equally, and none of us are different from others in regard to sin. We all need God's love and grace. Nor by will of the flesh, there's nothing that made us children of God by any human action, neither by the will of man, but children born of God. We are children born of God. And how does that happen? It happens this way. I tell you today that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, was born the babe at Bethlehem, and he came to suffer and die for every single one of you, taking upon himself every one of your sins, past, present, and future. In fact, the sins of the whole world. And the only thing that will keep you or anybody out of heaven is denying Christ that truth. You are beloved. And I tell you today, believe it, because it's yours. And it's as certain as this fact, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The eternal Son of God took on our human flesh, and He dwelt among us for our salvation. This is absolutely true. The Ten Commandments are clear, my friends, aren't they? You shall not sin, and yet we all do. We are to fear and love and trust in God above all things, and yet we fear all kinds of things, from health to not having money, to speaking up when we think we might be embarrassed about who God is. The law is given that every mouth be stopped and the whole world held accountable to God. Jesus intensifies the law Jesus says he who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The law condemns all. It's really clear. And it pushes us to Jesus. The creed teaches us who our Father is in heaven. God our Father who created all things and gives us all things, clothing, shoes, house, home, fields, cattle, spouse, everything that we could possibly have, vocations, children, grandchildren. More importantly, in the second article, we confess Jesus Christ. He has redeemed us not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and his innocent suffering death, that I might be his own, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness and innocence forever. It's absolutely certain. Baptism makes us absolutely certain. It's not symbolic. It really according to the New Testament, combines us with Christ. We were buried with Christ by baptism into his death. Baptism gives us Christ's death for sins. Baptism gives us Christ's life and perfection. Baptism gives us eternal life and a resurrection. We have absolution, which we practiced at the beginning of this service. Jesus Christ said, Whosoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven unto them. I tell you, in the name of Christ, right now, your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus. Do you believe it? Then the promise is absolutely certain, and it is yours. Jesus teaches us how to pray. He tells us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, what a wonderful thing. Jesus says, When you pray, when two or more gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. He invites us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven. So he promises that God hears us, he hears us, as a dear father hears his own dear children. And we have the Lord's Supper. Christ's body and blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. You can be absolutely certain that where there is forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. The Word became flesh to do all these things for us, to give all these things to us. Eternal life is yours because of Christmas, because eternal God became flesh in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living with us today. Uh, I'm Matthew Harrison, as I stated earlier, and I grew up in Sioux City, Iowa. I'm the president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and it's our partners in this Midwestern region that provide this wonderful program for all of you. If you have a church home, trust in Christ, God bless you. If you haven't been baptized or you're not going to church, uh, give a call to one of our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod congregations. There are thousands of them all around, 6,000 across the United States. And above all, God bless you and your family and your children with peace and joy and certainty of his love in this Christmas season. Thank you. <laughs>